Good morning and hey howdy. My name is James Adams with ABR Electric and man today I have a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, it is generators. I know you're like, ah, prayers have been answered. My purpose in life has been reestablished. You're welcome. So generators, I'm here in the great homeland of Texas and we just came through a storm and it, it destroyed us, okay? So all my, my family and friends, all you folks up there in New York and Michigan and North Dakota, you just, you just shut your mouths, okay? We're, we're working through it. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> I had family call and make fun. It's like, Pop, this is normal for us. Why are you guys all... Anyways, I don't want to talk about that. Generators. So what I'm finding is we're getting dozens and dozens of calls about generators to our company. And I realize, and this is why we're making the video, people don't really understand generators. I mean, beyond more than use them for tools for a couple hours or something. So I want to talk to you about generators. A couple of points, follow along. First of all, the generator, why? You say, well, James, that's obvious. The power went off and we were traumatized. The kids were in the dark crying and wailing. And No, no, no. I want you to sort of... Um, give some detail in terms of what was bad. Was it bad because the lights were off? Was it bad because the heat was off? Uh, was it bad because your router didn't work and you couldn't do anything? You know, you know what I'm saying? And the reason that gives you a point of focus for the generator, which is giving you temporary power to meet a need. And that's the way you have to look at it. Because if you look at it from the point of trauma and crisis, you're going to end up buying a gigantic generator that's really an emotional band-aid versus what you need. Just a thought, do what you want. So you have two paths. One is a permanent generator installation, and one is portable. If you're looking at this in the, in the sense of, you know what, I don't think this is going to happen again, but I want to do something, you're going to go to the portable path. It's going to give you some value, but you're not going to invest nearly as much money. If, however, you're the person, you say, look, I just want this to be dealt with. I want it to be automatic. I don't want to have to think about it. Next time power goes off, there might be a flicker, and I want all my stuff to stay on. You're going to go permanent, okay? So the two pros and cons, or the pros and cons for the two paths are these. The permanent, definitely a bigger investment. With the permanent, you're going to have a little bit more invested in the generator. You're going to have more with other trades. You're going to have electricians, plumbers, somebody doing a concrete pad. You're also going to have to deal with your HOA in the city for setbacks which we usually forget with generators, because now you have a permanently installed, basically, car on the side of your house. That's going to be a thing. With portable, a lot less cost, but man, you're going to be doing the work. And if you're okay with that, that's fine. But with portable, you have to be there when the power's off or it doesn't work. Um, you're going to wheel that thing out, plug it in, do a manual transfer, and it works. Okay? So that's really your two paths, bottom line pros and cons. Costs, what I'm seeing so far, and again, we're in Texas, costs of generator and trades may, may differ, but you're looking with a, a good size portable and the electrical that's needed, you're probably looking at a couple of grand. Okay, that's a good ballpark. With the permanent, you're probably looking at between 10 and 15 grand by the time you're done. Okay? Um, the other issues, real quick, and I need to bring this up, with the permanent, you need to look at your, how, what kind of fuel you're going to use. Most people use natural gas. Here's the problem with the permanent, the natural gas. A generator is a pig. Story. Hold on. First generator install I did, didn't really look at the specs real close. My bad. And the first time that generator kicked on and exercised, which an automatic will do by itself every couple weeks, it put out every pilot light in that poor person's house. Think about it. Due diligence, if you're doing permanent, do you have enough of a gas line to support your furnace and your generator? That is a thing, okay? So think about that if you're doing permanent. With both of these paths, you have to do maintenance. So if you're a person who doesn't do maintenance and you change your smoke detector battery sometime back in the late 80s, you know who you are, you're going to have to hire somebody. You're going to have to hire somebody. And the reason is, if you do, don't do maintenance on your generator, when it comes time and you have the next you know, early ice age, it won't start. So if you don't change the air filter, if you don't change the oil periodically, if you don't check it, if you don't exercise it, it may not come on. You're doing a coin toss. At that point, why spend the money? Okay. So 
Um, that's really the big two things, and that's why I wanted to get you going thinking about that if you're, if you're uh, considering a generator. I think it's a great idea. Uh, most people say, oh, I won't happen, um, but when it does happen, your power's out for more than an hour or two, it sucks. So there you go. Again, I'm James Adams with ABR Electric. Uh, pre please like and su subscribe. Leave some questions. You guys have been doing great with questions between surge protectors and some other items. Love that. There's more detail, but for today, that's where we're at. Generators, portable or permanent, what do you want to do? Have a great day.